Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Victoria Ackerman, and we're going to explore etheric spirit communication. Now, this is a method for tuning in to uh, our extrasensory perception, our ESP, our intuition, our psychic abilities. And it is an absolutely astounding method to be able to get information from another source, usually a person, but you can apply it to many different things. And it can also be used to give messages or receive messages, I should say, and um, healing and uh, guidance for life. But the method is uh, out of this world. So um, I'm going to use a hooky loud method for this. I um, will explain that in just a few minutes. Um, to be able to absorb a technique like this, it's important to fully embed it into you as though it were uh, muscle memory. Um, it gives you comfort and security when you get joggled and uh, you're on the spot and you're trying to get information. Maybe you're getting a little nervous. This gives you something to fall back on. I will tell you it also uh, eliminates connecting in with somebody's energy and then sticking with it. And then you try to go to somebody else to get a message and you can't because you're attached to that person. And that can be very bad because uh, sometimes you take on their physical challenges or mental challenges or whatnot. So it's it's a wonderful technique. I use it myself and it may point out to you some areas that you are struggling with and eliminate those uh, issues that you have. I will tell you that everyone has the ability to use their extrasensory perception um, on, on your own. You, you have it. It is a ability you already possess. Uh, you just have to know how to use it, find it, and hone it. Um, and all it does is require a specific focus. Uh, many people are not aware how to achieve that focus. So we're going to learn how to do that today. And I will tell you that focus, the quality of what comes through uh, very much depends on um your higher understanding of life it comes with responsibility uh some people uh, talk about uh, um advancing our souls the messages will reflect that and that is an integral part of uh tuning in if you will um you know they say psychics are able to bring their their consciousness to a state of higher awareness and focus to tap into the um, paranormal of information, which is the above normal or outside the normal information that they seek. And uh, opening your third eye can help you become better connected to your intuition and subconscious. And like I said, uh, helps give you guidance in life in mental, physical, spiritual, and emotional aspects, uh, which we'll talk about on another video, but this is the technique that how to do it. And I ask that you work along with me. Um, you will at some point for a short, maybe two or three minutes need to stand up. So if you need to pause this video and just have something to lay your phone on or make sure you have maybe three feet wide and two feet uh, depth um, so you can see your computer or phone or iPad or whatever you're using so that you can do a little movement. Trust me, it's important because it's part of embedding this ability into you so it is always there for when you need it. Just go with the flow, as they say. And we're going to start off with a story. So take a deep breath in and relax. And as you, and you may want to close your eyes for this, put your feet on the floor, your hands uh, uncrossed by your side, uh, close your eyes and just take a deep breath in and bring in all the wonderful things this world has to offer. And as you exhale, 
let go of that which you no longer need. And as you inhale, bring in the positivity, the goodness, the patience, the, uh, the well-being and good health, and relaxation. And as you exhale, let go of your tension. Let it roll down your shoulders, down your arms and legs. Release, release your eyes your cheeks, your jaw, relax your shoulders, your arms, release your stomach, your legs, and your feet. Just let it flow and relax. As I tell this story, I didn't write the story. It's from a gentleman who went to Hawaii and learned about net fishing which is where you have a, a fishing net. It's six feet or 15 feet large, wide in a circle. It's got weights on the end and you throw it out into the water. And once it sinks, you pull it back in and uh, hopefully you have a catch of fish. So let me start with this story as you're sitting there relaxed, release. The story is called Learning a Larger Life Lesson Through Thrownet Fishing on Maui, Hawaii. Thrownet fishing seems easy enough. You just take a big net with weights on the bottom and toss it out into the water and walk away with dinner, right? Well, not so much. It was a very hard and messy lesson to learn in Maui's Hana Bay during my stale stay at Travasa Hana, but there's one thing I did while there that will stick with me the most. Why? Because it was a lesson about fishing that wasn't about fishing. I learned about deeper things while standing out in Hana Bay with my friend Andrew Park, like patience, respect, culture, and life, all through throw net fishing. I wanted to run out into the water and throw the net and catch a little something and then get back and do a different activity. There was so much for me to see and do in the area. I wanted to run, rush off and get in as much as I could before flying back to the mainland. So I wound up on the lawn of Travesa Hanna learning the proper way to set up and throw a six foot and a 14 foot net. It all started with patience. I saw how fast Andrew Park did it, and I thought I should be able to do it just as quickly. But whoa, big fella, you have to slow down and take it step by step and set the net up properly so it un unfurls in the right way and thus catches something. And this wasn't easy to learn, since I tend to be the type of guy who starts to put things together without looking at the directions. Only after I finish do I look at the guide to see where exactly all the leftover parts go. But with throw net fishing, I had to learn once again how to take a deep breath and accept the very blatant fact that I don't know everything. Um, Admitting to myself uh, that to myself, even though I knew that already, was a big pill to swallow. I mean, I know I don't know everything. I don't know the first thing about neurology, uh, but something like throwing a net into the water to fish seems straightforward enough. So why take a lesson? Because it isn't straightforward. It's quite complicated and difficult, to tell you the truth. So I spent the afternoon with Andrew throwing the net again and again and again. I was reminded of respect. He didn't know it at the time, but he was teaching me a very valuable lesson far beyond throw net fishing. And that too tied into patience and the need for me to slow down and enjoy what I was doing at the moment. Andrew's natural patience and encouraging demeanor 
impressed on me the point of slowing down, learning from and sharing knowledge with others, and in the end, thankfully accepting what the ocean gives you, which can very easily be nothing. Uh, I laughed at that too. And I, as I repeatedly threw the net into an area where Andrew pointed, uh, sometimes it made it there. And most times it curled up in a bunch and landed in a glob of fishing line in a totally random location. But each time I respected what had happened, knowing I hadn't paid close enough attention to Andrew's lesson, and I needed to get out and try it again, learning from what I had done wrong and trying to prove on, improve on it. Throw that fishing dates back to hundreds of years ago in the Hawaiian culture. The tradition was passed down from generation to generation. It was how it happened for Andrew learning to make his own net and throw net fishing from his family. As it was um, how I learned about what I found in the end to be one of the most fantastic aspects of Hawaiian culture, which is very simply how to catch and provide food for not just yourself, but also for your family, your ohana. So when I was providing for my ohana, my family, by casting the net, was I providing for my family by casting the net each time? Well, no, I was only out having fun while learning about another cultural aspect, which makes Hawaii so great. But in doing so, I also learned a little something more. It was deeper than patience, respect, or culture. In the end, it was about life. Trudging back up the hill from Hannah Bay with Andrew, I thanked him for teaching me how to throw the fishnet. I truly, despite my impatience and initial disinterest, had a fun time. I had experienced something new and I had smiled. I, and during our time together, I had enjoyed life. I slowed down, I breathed, and I experienced something deeper in meaning than just how to throw a fishnet. On the surface, yes, that's what I did. Um, but on a different level, it came back as sharing, learning, and being happy with what I was doing. That's really what it's all about, too, doing what makes you happy. Recently, I've been asked for advice from several different people. And thanks to the lesson I learned while throw net fishing with Andrew Park, my answer is always the same. You should do what makes you happy. After all, if, you, if it won't make you happy, why do it? It certainly seems simple enough, I know, but while I say it to others, it's a lesson I'm still trying to learn on my own. One day, maybe, I'll learn and take that full step. For now, though, I simply have to accept and enjoy what the ocean gives me through patience, respect, and cultural learning which is a small crab and a little kupupi fish, not exactly enough to feed my ohana, my family. And when you're ready and comfortable, open your eyes. So I'm going to uh, show you some pictures. And uh, this first picture, shows you the process that he describes. All the, the pictures aren't completely accurate, uh, taken from different places, but you can see a gentleman holding the net with the weights on the bottom, and he's about to throw it out into the ocean. In the middle is him throwing it out in a big circle. And then, of course, what he does is once it sinks, he pulls it back in. And then the last picture is somebody with a smaller net and he's looking at his catch, his fish. 
And this is not just a, a parable or a template. Uh, this is something that we can imbue in what we do. Again, here's another picture of a gentleman with his throw net ready to cast it out and uh, cast, casting it out into a beautiful circle, probably somebody different, but that's okay. And then uh, here's the net pull, being pulled back in. And lo and behold, we can notice a fish in the net. He caught something. So now it gets a little bit more complicated. Here's a gentleman throwing out a, or a person throwing out the throne at. And if you look in the top corner, you see a picture of something. Now take a moment to just think about if you were on the phone to someone, how would you describe that? First thing that comes off your head, you're talking to a friend or loved one. What would you say to them about that top uh, right hand picture? What would you say to what you had caught in your net? And you can always pause this tape if you need a little more time. Um, maybe you said, oh, well, I caught uh, multiple fish or I caught three fish. Well, let's delve in and look a little bit more at the specifics because it looks like at first glance, we caught a large white fish and then two gray or blue fish with scale, a scale pattern on them. But if you start to look closely, you'll see the scale pattern is similar on the white fish. It just, the light is reflecting on it in a different way. I don't know if it's the same fish or a different one. Uh, and if you look, you'll see smaller fish up in the top of the picture. So now take just a moment and think about what you would perceive if you were actually there, if you were where that gentleman is and were uh, looking at your catch and were talking on the telephone to someone, what would you say to them as far as the details or specifics of what you caught? Take a moment to do that right now in your mind. Again, if you need more time, you can always pause the tape. Uh, but it's we start to think about the size of these fish. How long are they? What do they weigh? Are they heavy? Are they light? Are they wiggly little things? Or are they kind of stationary or, or doing something uh, different? What is the smell like? Can you smell it or even taste it on your tongue? Uh, what are the colors? What is the feeling of you got of joy or surprise that you got this many fish? Or shoot, I wish it were more. There's so many details to be seen besides our first glance. Now look at the bottom picture and wow, it's starting to get even more complex, isn't it? And that becomes more muddled and harder to see and notice all the details too. Now in this picture, we start out with our throw net, throwing it out into the ocean. And right below that yellow picture is a square net that came back. And may, perhaps you would say, oh, I caught a number of small little fish. They all look the same size. Okay, so there's a continuity there. But then we look over to the large blue picture on the uh, right hand side and oh my gosh it is so much fish i wouldn't even know where to begin on how to describe the details of those fish it is so much and that i liken to many people who are psychic who uh go to one ear on the side of their head and they just open up the dome all the way up over to the following ear and they are totally open to anything and everything far and near 
front, back, sideways, and, and up and down, and they get so much information. Um, it's chaos. You don't know what to do with it. And that makes it very hard because there's no focus and no grounding in that perception. And therefore, you get so much in your info, you, you just don't know what to do. It. Chaos is not a good thing. So on this next picture, you can see someone just very simply throwing out their uh, throw net. Imagine yourself doing that and then pulling it back in through the water. And now we see a catch from the throw net. In one uh, picture, the man has one fish. In the next picture, the man has, oh, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five fish. And in that picture, you could start saying, well, I got five fish, but um, well, they all look the same size. But when I start to look closely, there's one in the middle that looks a little bit bigger than the others and one on the side of that big fish that looks a little smaller and you start to go into more detail and it's the uh, quantity of information that you can handle and express all right so oops there we go so i hope uh that gives you a little bit of an idea of the process of throw net fishing. And here's where I just ask you to trust in the process. I'm going to play a video. And for this video, um, you want to prop your phone up. If you have, if you're looking on a phone, just prop it up on a shelf. Or if you're on a computer, push your chair back and stand up. Give yourself about three feet wide and two feet of depth to have a little movement. When I do this in the classroom, uh, we usually dim the lights. It's not dark, but you know that way nobody feels uh, uh, funny doing a little dance. But this is what I encourage you. Do the dance. It's, it's not a whole big dance. Uh, like, you know, the, I'm sorry, the doing the potato and that sort of thing. But it's, something that shows a process and the purpose of this video is to embed that prop process in our psyche and our different types our mental and physical muscle memory if you will it becomes a comfort something we can not only fall back on when we get nervous or um, a little scared uh, you know am i doing this right am i getting the right information it gives us comfort but also it eliminates us from connecting in with somebody's your the person that you're giving a message to if you're giving a message to somebody else you, it eliminates staying with their energy taking on negative things and not being able to disconnect we also start to uh work with our clairvoyance and honing it greatly and we recognize where we're looking at instead of opening our dome and we're looking at anything and everything we actually have a focus at what we're looking at and what information we're receiving sometimes <laughs> excuse me we pull, pull the net in and we don't get nothing or we get some seaweed and then we just do it again. Um, usually my students do it once, two, or maybe even three times. Boy, I'm out there just throwing the net, pulling it in, throwing the net and pulling it in. But um, I have the patience to work on. It does take patience to pull, uh, anyway, pull the net in and look at the fish or the information that you've received. So uh, prop your phone up, uh, step back from your computer uh, or your iPad, and uh, get ready to, uh, and please stand up and work with this video I'm about to show you and do what she does. I promise you it is worth it. Okay, get ready. We're gonna start with a vamp. And let's go. Pull those nets. Hooky. 
everybody loves the hooky lao and the lao lao throw your nets into the sea and walk forward and one two three and go to the left slide left what a beautiful day for fishing sway Swish those nets. Make a beautiful bay. And go again. Pull those nets. Everybody. Wear the lao lao. Throw their nets. All those little fishes coming into your net. Go to the left to a hooky now slide. Hooky left. What a beautiful day. We're repeating this part. Sway down. Swish those nets. And make that beautiful Laie Bay. Everybody, wear the lao lao and throw your nets into the sea. Have those fishies swimming. Go to the left and slide to the end. Keep pulling, hooky. One more. Close. Okay. Right, so now so we're I hope we're to the next uh, step, and we're going to either work with a partner, of the or we're going out. to just send our and fishing net out into is, the universe. I hope and you we're going to cast your our net out into the in front of us, just like those men all did. The, um, they um, had the, the uh, come net back over their you. shoulder, and they um, flung it out and into the sea. Process, and then they let the anchor sink. And then they pull uh, it back information. in. It can and be the medium shift what they you can use it for so healing, get a part of your own information. Uh, you and don't have to or, uh, throw the net on another person. To but ethers. for these purposes, and it's always it wonderful as you do to it. have a person um, to work with who can give you validation. It because you're or you can just throw it out into the Again, another class and pull it back if you're trying to get information for yourself. And you throw that net over the person. This is where the practice out in front of you to get uh, either an answer to a question or to just get general information for you from uh, your from uh, whatever source that you would like. And then you pull the net into you. And when you do, it's important to take time to look and see what the net brought to you. Now, what it might bring to you besides little umma umma fish is uh, a color. It might just bring you a color. It might bring you a feeling. It might bring you something that we call clear cognizance or a clear knowing, just knowing. Um, and what you have to do is uh, just be fearless and say or recognize what you've gotten. It could be a feeling, clear sentience, a feeling um of any type it might be bloop you might just see a flash clairvoyance of something or you might see a person or an item in spirit or you know in front of your eyes in your mind's eye you might also pull back and hear something it could be a song it could be a word or a phrase and these are the things you need to observe very carefully in your net when you bring it back, give it a little depth, give it some patience and time, make sure you're in a higher frame of um, consciousness, because it does affect the information that comes in. Be happy, enjoy what you're doing, take your net, throw it over the person or throw it out, bring it back and observe, take a moment 
and trust what you're receiving and realize it can be anything at all. It can be in any form. Uh, like I said, the color, the emotion, uh, a knowing, a feeling, something that you see. Uh, give it some time and uh, see if you don't get some information. And if you're working with someone, see if they can't give you validation. Now, don't you might have them write down a list of things that you say so you can keep out of your left brain, if you will. You won't be overanalyzing it because as you do this, you just want to let it come organically to you. So give out the information, let them write it down. And when you've uh, seen all the fish in your net, you can either cast it again for more information or put it down. And that's the time to let them give you feedback on the information that you've gotten. Or if you're just putting the net out into the universe to pull back information for you or an answer to something that you're asking, see if you don't get validation from it. It just feels right. And it might be something you don't expect. Be open to the possibilities. Um, you don't, you're getting information that you don't want to have a prejudgment on what you're going to get, but you can still get validation from the person you're giving the message to after you've given the full message or through your life, through the information you got. Uh, do this, practice it. If you practice this, technique on a regular basis, I can promise you a few things. One, your courage will increase. In other words, your confidence in being able to give a message. I once had, um, actually twice, I had cats named. One was Tootsie and one was Tootie. And I didn't want to say either one of them. I was kind of, I felt kind of silly. And I'm so glad I did because that was the names and, and, uh, it, the, the owners gave me validation that had great meaning for them. Remember that the message you receive is either a gift to yourself or to the person that you're giving a message to. I can also tell you that by using this technique, you focus on the information received, not all over the place, and the quality of your messages increases quite a bit. And it also lets you hone that perception. I know one medium, he says, I'm, I'm just clairsentient. That's all I am. And then he'll start describing somebody that he sees in spirit. Um, uh, it hones all of these senses and it makes you better and better and better with regular practice. So I wish you the very best in your journey for etheric spirit communication. Remember to do your hukilau and throw the net out into the sea and pull it back and uh, take a good focused close look and feel and listen and hear, taste, touch, smell, and uh, see if you can't receive messages because I know you can. Many blessings to you. Namaste.